So last year I reseeded my entire lawn with Baron Bruggs RPR and it did not make it through winter all that well. So today I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to fix the patches. I usually do it in two different ways based on if the patch is small or if it's a larger area. So let's just get started. So I'm going to use two different kinds of soil to reseed the patches. Here we have compost and over here we have fertilizer made from cow manure. So it doesn't smell that great but it's awesome stuff. So the reason why I'm using this for reseeding is that it will improve the soil, it will fertilize it so you don't have to have any starter fertilizer or anything like that. And also it will help a lot with the microorganisms in your, in your lawn. It will increase the micro life in the lawn a lot and it's all natural stuff. I will also be seeding with the Baron Brug RPR, which I already used last year. Even though it didn't do that great during winter, I still see a lot of pros with it. It's so soft to walk on, the color is awesome. It's not as prone to disease as my last grass was. Also one of the biggest benefits is that it only takes about seven days for it to germinate. And I'm not the most patient guy in the world. And I mean, with the kind of winters we have, we're always gonna have stuff to reseed during spring. We're always gonna have patches. No matter what grass type you use, you're always gonna end up with some patches after winter. Cause we do have a lot of ice burn, a lot of snow, a lot of snow mold. No matter what grass type you use, you're always going to end up with some patches here and there. And normally people say you shouldn't seed in the spring because you have a lot of weed pressure. But I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to leave it like this until fall? I mean, of course not. So we Swedes tend to overseed every spring and every spring you don't know what kind of weather you get. Like this spring, it's been really weird. So that's why I prefer the Baron Brugge still. With Kentucky Bluegrass or Creeping Red Fescue, you have to wait like three, four weeks for it to germinate. And that includes keeping it moist for three, four weeks, like watering three, four times a day. So I think the RPR is just more convenient. We'll see in a couple of years if this ends up happening every year, it dies off like this. Then I might mix in some Creeping Red Fescue or something that handles winter better. But for now, I'm gonna stick with this. By the way, that's my new mower behind there. I hope you can't see what it is. I'll cover that in another video, but I'm super excited. I'm dying to try it out, but I haven't even assembled it yet, but I'm getting to it first things first. So for the smaller patches, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up the soil, the compost and the cow manure all in the wheelbarrow. Actually, it doesn't smell that bad. I thought it was gonna smell worse, but it's really wet though. I would prefer it if it was dry. It's easier to work with if it's dry. Then we'll add the compost. And then just start mixing it. Now I might have put too much in there, but I have so many patches. But maybe I should have started with half the amount, make it easier to work with. It's just so full now. But that's what you get for thinking afterwards. <laughs> Which I tend to do a lot of the times for some reason. Now I'm actually going to leave it to dry for a while because it's just easier to work with if it's dry. And while the soil is just drying up, just take your metal rake and just cultivate the soil a bit where you want to seed because you want to make sure it's a bit loosened up. You take away all the debris that might be there. This is the stuff you want to take away. This is just dead grass, dead material just laying on top of the soil. So with the rake, I just want to get rid of this. Just make it a bit easier for the seeds to actually get down and start setting some roots. Now, if you have larger areas than I do here, then you can easily just take the power rake and go over it. He'll get the same thing, but with a lot less work. So it's dry enough. Now I'm actually going to mix in the seed right into the soil. Now I don't read on the bag how much seed I actually need. If you want to know, just read on the bag. I just go by feel. Since I've done this a couple of times, you kind of start getting a feel for how much seed you need. But if you want to know, just read on the bag how much you need. This is kind of how I want it to look. This is an awesome mix. And you don't have to use a wheelbarrow. I'm doing it right now because I have so many patches to fix. Normally when I don't have this much patches to fix, I just do the same but in a bucket. And if you're not using Baron Brugge's RPR, which germinates really fast, you could actually just water this and put it out in the garage or in a shed or something and wait for it to pre-germinate. Then what you want to do is just make sure you water it and make sure you keep track of it. Because as soon as you see the seeds cracking up, that's when you want to put it out. Don't wait too long. 
But for now, since I'm using the RPR, which germinates pretty fast, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it in the wheelbarrow and just put it out on the lawn straight away. Then I'm gonna take my leveling rake and just make sure everything is nice and smooth. Now you don't have to use a leveling rake, you can just use the backside of a normal rake. But it's an awesome tool to have, make sure everything is leveled and smooth. But it works with a normal rake too if you don't have one of these. Alright, I filled up a lot of the holes, but once you get out there you see that there's so many patches. I actually didn't think I would need the Lanzi for this, since I thought I could just fill in the patches like this, but there's just too much. So I'm gonna just spread the seed, then I'm gonna go over it with the Lanzi and just put on a light layer of this soil. Unfortunately, there's just too many patches, so we'll just switch methods. But if you do have small patches, this is an awesome way to actually fix them. All right, so the lens is ready to go. All right, so I put the seed down. So now I just want to go over it with the lensy just to get a nice light top layer of the soil on there. Hopefully this will go a lot smoother than taking all of the patches one by one. All right, so I'm done with the back. It's looking pretty good, actually. It was so much easier with the lensy. Um, as you can see, it's just so many small patches. I mean, if it was only this and this and this, I mean, sure, could have just done the wheelbarrow thing, but I mean, now when you've top dressed everything and it's a bit darker where the patches are, you can see just how many patches there are everywhere. So using the lens, it was actually a lot easier. So now it's time to do the front. And in the front, I'm still gonna use the Lanzi, but I'm gonna use more soil improvement there. Because as I said, when they did the front, that was a sod insulation. They used pretty much only sand. So I think it needs a lot of soil improvement there. Let's hope that's one of the issues and not only the Berenberg RPR. The sand is a dead material. It doesn't hold nutrients. It doesn't hold water that well. So I'm hoping to improve the soil will actually improve how much of the grass will actually survive next year. Hopefully, I mean, you have to try, right? So now let's do the front. Almost done. Now I just need to level everything off. All right, so my battery died. The only thing I actually did was go over everything with the garden roller, making sure I have that good seed to soil contact. And I actually seeded on top of everything because I had so much soil on there. I was just a bit afraid to bury the seeds. So I didn't want to seed first and then use the soil on top of it. And then finally I just went over everything with my new rake, raked everything lightly. By the way, I love this thing. It's super awesome, it's so big. <laughs> Final step and the most annoying step is to now keep this moist and water it constantly. I think that's probably the most common mistake people do. They do all of this work, they seed, they do everything, it takes them a full day, then they water it in, final thing they do, but then they leave it to dry out. But I think that's where most people give up, that's just too much work. But I mean that's kind of what you need to do when you overseed and top dress. All of this usually takes a day, but when people ask me, I say this is the easiest part. Keeping it moist and watering it every day, that's the real challenge. But so far I've been able to do that, so I suspect I will this time too. <laughs> Just because I'm a nerd and I've got nothing better to do apparently than to water my lawn. <laughs> If you know you can't water it every day because you go to work and stuff like that, I mean, you need to plan around that. There's no getting around that you need to keep watering this every day until it germinates. If you're lucky and it rains for two weeks, that's the best. But I mean, if you're not lucky and it doesn't rain for two weeks, you gotta do it yourself. So that's the final step. Then I'm done with the overseeding and the soil improvement. Hopefully that helps. I'll probably need to do it again this fall, just, just to make sure that it's not only sand in the front, that I actually have some good soil and good micro life going. But yeah, hopefully this will start growing in seven days. And by the way, 
it's getting to that time of year where the mosquitoes are just so annoying. If you have that issue, get one of these. It's a Pioneer mosquito magnet. It's awesome, it kills off everything. I just started it today, but it's gonna take a few weeks for it to kill off all the mosquitoes, but it's so worth it. It is a bit pricey, but so worth it, trust me. All right, so now we just wait for this to germinate and I'll see you guys next time.